Hey everyone, welcome to another video by Singularity Computers. Today I'm doing an installation guide for the EK water block for the Asus Rampage 4 Extreme. Now all motherboard water block installations are similar, so you can apply what you learn from this video to any motherboard water block installation as long as you follow the instructions that come with the water block. So the water block that I'm installing today is actually called the EKFB kit RE4 and it's two water blocks and this is something that you'll see sometimes motherboard water blocks will be split up. One is for the chipset, one is for the MOSFETs. Now there's four different versions of this particular water block. The copper plexi, copper acetyl, nickel plexi and nickel acetyl. Now these different versions just have different aesthetics. They're all the same water block and this insulation guide will apply to all of those. So the one that we're installing today is the nickel plexi. Okay, so with the water block you get instructions which covers two sides of an A4 page. You get the necessary mounting hardware and you also get some thermal interface material. Okay, now for a quick look at the water blocks. This water block covers the X79 chipset. So it covers this part of the motherboard and extends up out of the way of the graphics cards so that the inlet and outlet can be easily accessed. Now when it comes to EK's water block product range, they are just unmatched. I mean EK has a water block for almost everything. Their quality is as good as it gets. I've been using EK water blocks for years and I have never had any kind of a problem. EK also has some of the highest performing water blocks on the planet and just look at these water blocks. The aesthetics speak for themselves. Once they're installed and they have coolant running through them, they can really add to an amazing build. They can, you know, take your build to the next level. Now for a quick look at the MOSFET water block. You can see the cuts in the tops of the water blocks. This is something that EK has started doing recently. And I think it looks great. It really adds to the aesthetics. You can also see the EK logos in both of the water blocks. Now even though this is quite a small water block, you can still see that it has a high flow design. You can see the large area between the inlet and outlet and you can also see the raised area and this is to add extra surface area to give better performance. Now you can see the standoffs on the bottom of the water block. EK does this on all of their water blocks now to make installation a lot easier. I just thought I'd quickly mention something that I get a lot of questions about. A number of months ago, EK had some reports that people were experiencing corrosion of their nickel plating. EK has now completely resolved this problem with their new EN Electrolys nickel plating, which they now use on all of their nickel plated water blocks. Okay, so this is what you're going to need. First of all, a Phillips head screwdriver, maybe two because there is a number of bigger and smaller screws. You're also going to need a pair of scissors, as well as that, some non-conductive thermal paste. I'm going to be using Arctic MX4. Also, some thermal interface material remover of some kind. As you can see, I'm using ArctiClean. And finally, some kind of a low-lind cloth, or some people even use paper towels. Okay, before I move forward with the water block installation, I just need to say that extreme care needs to be taken at all times during this process. Even the slightest mistake can result in damage to your components. You will notice that during this video I'm wearing a wireless anti-static wrist strap. Now I don't believe in these at all, I certainly don't trust them. Normally I don't wear an anti-static wrist strap at all because I find they just get in the way far too much. The only reason I was wearing this wireless anti-static wrist strap was to draw attention to the fact that you need to do something about static. From personal experience, I find the most reliable way to avoid damage from static is to earth yourself before touching any computer component. 
Okay, so obviously the first step in this process is to remove the stock cooling from the motherboard. So I have the motherboard up on its side to give me access to the mounting screws. So I'm just going to undo all of these one by one. Make sure that whatever you're touching on the other side of the motherboard is something strong. You know, not something that's going to bend over and break. Just be careful once you get towards the end of the screws that you hold the heatsink assembly onto the motherboard because otherwise it's going to start to fall off and bend and put pressure on the remaining screws. And then, you know, at the end it's obviously going to completely fall off. That's definitely something you want to avoid. It's not only will it damage the heatsink, which doesn't really matter anymore, it could damage the motherboard itself. So just carefully remove that. So you can see there's already some thermal interface material and you can keep those keep those all handy just in case. Okay, so I've removed all of the screws. Now I've turned the motherboard back over. And if there's a fan in the cooling assembly, you need to make sure that you first of all unplug that fan. Now to remove these small fan plugs, I find the best way is to use a small flathead screwdriver. You need to be extremely careful, don't go levering it, but it is a lot better than using your fingers because you can actually end up damaging surrounding components when using your fingers just because of how small and fiddly the plug is. Now the next step is to remove the heatsink assembly. Because of the thermal interface material, it can be stuck very strongly to the motherboard. So you need to go around to each individual heatsink and make sure that you basically just move it side to side slowly until you break the seal. You don't want to go levering it from one end. Okay, so the X79 chipset and also the MOSFETs are now exposed, ready for the installation of the water blocks. The next step now is to clean the existing thermal interface material from the motherboard. This can often be difficult, just try your best not to spread it around and get it as clean as possible. The stock thermal interface material is actually only on the X79 chipset and the MOSFETs, so you don't have to worry about cleaning anywhere else. Okay, it's time for some ArctiClean. Okay, that's it. The motherboard is clean and it is now ready for the thermal interface material to be installed. I'm going to call it Tim for short from now on. I already mentioned at the beginning of this video that you can apply the information that you learn from this guide to any motherboard water block installation. But despite that, you always need to follow the instructions that come with your water block because there is obviously going to be variations between different water block installations, but not only that, they often change things. They might, you know, slightly update the water block, and even if you're doing the same installation again, I always follow the instructions, even though I've done this many times, because I know that they can change little things, and you don't want to be caught out because you can damage your components. Now, for the water block that goes on the X79 chipset, you need to use thermal paste. So I'm going to be using the Arctic MX4. And for the water block that goes on the MOSFETs, you need to use the TIM or thermal pad that came with the water blocks. Now this thermal pad needs to be cut into two pieces. One to go on the upper level that you can see here and one to go on the lower level. Okay, so as you can see, I have cut the thermal pad into two pieces. It needs to be cut exactly in half. And I just did that with the pair of scissors that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Now these, the thermal pad has protective foil on both sides, so you need to remove that before you install it. That is extremely important. 
otherwise it's not going to conduct heat properly. Something that EK says that you can do is install some thermal paste onto the surface that you're going to be installing the thermal pads onto just to help them stick and stay in position until you install the water block. You certainly don't want to use too much thermal paste though. You can see how much I've used there in the background. You don't want to make a mess with it. Use just enough to help the thermal pads to stick. Okay, I've finished installing the thermal pads. So that's what it looks like. It is now all ready for the water block to be installed. Now I just need to install the thermal paste onto the X79 chipset. Okay, now everyone has different ways of installing thermal paste and different ideas about it. All I'm going to say is that you need to apply it evenly and thinly, and at the end you shouldn't be able to see the surface that you're applying it to. Now, you can use something to apply it if you want to. I actually just use my finger because I find that that is the easiest way. As long as you wash your hands properly afterwards, it's really not a problem. Okay, I'm now going to place this into position and basically before you let it make contact with the motherboard you need to make sure that it's lined up. Just check where the holes are on it. Make sure you line them up perfectly because you don't really want to be moving it around too much you know once you have it in, in position because otherwise you'll spread the thermal paste everywhere. That's interesting, not stopping it. There we go. Okay, just checking that it's lined up. Okay, the water block is in position. Now what you need to do is prepare your mounting hardware. Check your installation guide, get everything that you need prepared. So I've got all my screws and washers here. In this case, they're the smaller silver screws and all of the plastic washers and these larger black screws are for the MOSFET water block so I'll put those up there now what you need to do I know that this is pretty much almost lined up you need to apply pressure very carefully okay I have moved it a little bit but that's okay don't apply enough pressure to bend the motherboard just enough pressure to keep it in position Okay, there we go, so I've turned the motherboard around. Now what you need to do is just make sure the holes line up. And then grab yourself one of the screws and a plastic washer. And I just do them up by hand to start with. It's always a little bit difficult to hold the motherboard in position with one hand and, you know, line up, line everything up and get the screws in. But okay it won't go in by hand so I'm just going to there we go do not do it up yet leave it very loose now just continue putting the rest of the screws in and don't tighten any of them until they're all in Okay, now that they're all in, you need to go ahead and tighten them evenly. So I'm just going to start there, tighten a little bit, tighten that one a little bit, and they don't need to be very tight at all. Tighten this top one a bit, back to the bottom. Okay, that's it. Basically, when you feel it, you know, really start to grab, just go about half a turn, maybe quarter of a turn after that. It's a little bit difficult to judge, but just remember that they don't need to be tight. Okay, that's it. The X79 chipset water block is installed. Now it's time to move on to the MOSFET water block. This one's going to be a lot easier because it's so much smaller. 
So that's it. Now it's in position and ready to go. So now I'm going to again turn the motherboard over. So I'm holding it into position at the same time as I'm spinning the motherboard around. And the holes are actually lined up perfectly already, which is good. Sometimes, you know, it might have kind of slid out of position a little bit as you were moving the motherboard, which is okay. You just got to slide it back. Now, I'm going to use the same plate that was on the back of the motherboard by default. I'm also going to use the same thermal interface material because it's not critical. You know, the, the main part of the cooler is on the other side. So I'm just going to place this into position while keeping everything lined up. It's actually pretty sticky, so... Now I'm going to grab the other two mounting screws. Well, there's actually three, but I'll start with two of them. So you can do these up, just go side to side, nice and evenly. Same thing as before. Now you just need to grab the, the other screw with a plastic washer and do that one up as well. This one goes just down there, right there, and that's it. Okay, all finished. So now I'm just going to give you a good look around at the finished product. So what I'll do now is just give the water blocks a bit of a clean, clean all the finger marks off them before I install them into the system. I won't be including any temperature results in this video, but if you want temperature results then check out the Client Build 5 Nighthawk build log on my channel. I'll put a link on the screen. Now, another final step that EK recommends is that you, once you've installed the water blocks, you remove them and check the indentations on the TIM to see if you mounted the water blocks evenly. And then you can remount them and correct, you know, any uneven mounting. Now, I do recommend that you follow the manufacturer's instructions. But I believe this to be a redundant process because, I mean, if you've made the mistakes the first time, you're highly likely to make them again a second time. Not only that, the more times you install and uninstall the water blocks, the bigger the risk to your components because you're continuing to handle them. You could potentially damage them. You're better off just doing it the once to keep the risk as low as possible and you know taking care to get the water blocks as even as possible like I showed you. The other thing is if you reinstall the water blocks you will also need to reapply the thermal paste and you will also no doubt need to replace the thermal pads because after multiple installations they get really flat and they can also tear. Now, if you want to see these water blocks in action, make sure you check out the Singularity Computers Client Build 5 build log. The system is called Nighthawk. As I mentioned, the temperature results are also in this build log. I actually end up installing 5 EK water blocks onto this motherboard because I also install water blocks onto the CPU and memory. It's an extremely high-end water-cooled build that I put a lot of work into and these water blocks are one of the main features of the build. That sums up this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like and favorite if you want to see more.